Okay, today is, I believe, April the 6th, not sure what the date is, of uh, 2023, and I've started another project here. Actually, this one's beginning to work. It's got a, got a strange problem. Maybe some of you guys have got some thoughts on it. It's going to be another AM transmitter. I'm going to plate modulate this 833A right here. I've got a switch that I've put in here so I can run it class C or I can flip it and run it class B which is what it runs uh, has a grid driven single sideband amplifier so I, I don't want to get into all the details of how to run it between B and C but if you're really interested I'll tell you how I do it it's actually pretty simple Okay, well, I just love that 833. Right now, it's all tuned up on 20 meters. I changed out the plate tank uh, circuit in there, the plate tank coil, to a B&W 850A. I had the 852, which is a lower impedance um, plate tank circuit. I'm trying not to get into too much of that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, plate uh, voltage will end up being 3200. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the modulator, so the audio guys out there will probably like this. It runs a pair of push-pull uh, three 400 Zs. Uh, I've got them set up so that there's exactly 2,500 volts on the plates of this one. Like I say, and it's a separate power supply. It uses its own power supply. Here's the power transformer for it. It's got a choke back there in the back right there. There's the capacitor bank all along there. I know it's kind of dark in there. Here, let me see here. Uh, there's the capacitor bank in there. You might find some of that interesting. That's those. Uh, that's those epoxy block type. Uh, they're rated 20,000 volt PIV, two amp. They're in a bridge. There's four of them. You can see how I put all the capacitors in series. They got two banks in there. I haven't completely wired that second one because I'm not using it. Because I'm using it as a choke input, I'm putting 3,000 volts across it, uh, across the bridge, and I'm getting 2,500 out, which is about right. You get about 90% uh, into a, a choke filter. That's a, uh, a choke in the back is a 10 Henry 400 milliamps. Okay, well here's kind of the star of the show. This is a UTC multi-match transformer, it weighs 85 pounds. Uh, this is the secondary. You can strap it for just about anything from 500 ohms to 20 some about close to 30k and the same thing for the um, For the primary. Let's look behind it Let's uh, The high voltage is not on but if I put it like that we can't initialize it This is the driver transformer right here. That's a 50 watt It's a 10k secondary uh, 4 8 16 ohm primary or actually the other way around for an eight it's an audio transformer I've got it strapped in for eight ohms right there and it's uh, being driven at the moment by this little uh, uh, audio amplifier here that takes the microphone input this is not big enough but it'll, it'll drive it a little bit so I can show you what I'm talking about if we get around here behind it uh, here it is behind it there's the power supply choke, etc. Here's the secondary, actually the primary of it. I know what I'm trying to say. So you can strap this for just about anything. So you can match just about any primary impedance from this side to the secondary impedance. I use uh, spark plug wire right here, solid copper spark plug wire. That's what that big wire is. It actually goes up to the plates. And uh, that transformer right there, that's the filament transformer. It takes 5 volts, 30 amps to light those guys. There's the uh, lights, the filaments, grounds. I'm always very picky with grounds. Here's my chassis grounds and everything. Okay, well here comes the interesting part. It's kind of cool, but I've got a problem. I'll go ahead and describe it first. This transformer right there talks a lot. Now, here's another... AM transmitter, power supply down here, modulator. This is, uses a BC610 modulation transformer. And if I get about this close to it, I can get a little feedback sometimes. 
this is uh, this is uh, acoustic feedback I'm getting. This is not RF feedback. I don't have that problem. And uh, there's the push pull uh, 812 amplifier. That's here. I'll turn it on just see, see it lit up in there. A pair of uh, 812As and, and push pull RF. Use a swinging link. I've showed this one before. This this one out. This one just works so darn good. Just so good that uh, I just couldn't take it apart. I didn't use anything on this one to build this one. So they're both freestanding. Okay, let me show you the kind of the interesting part. Let's see if I can do this. We'll plug our audio in. I unplug it so I can move around a little bit. I got some, you know, some more work to do. Gonna put bottom on the chassis. Gotta bolt it in, all that kind of stuff. You know, put some screening in front of it, at least something like that. Front and back, make it safe. It's not safe now, of course. Okay, well, let's see, put the high voltage back on here so I can initialize it. And uh, here we go. Now you hear that? Well, here. So I've got to turn the audio down right here for turning all audio down. Okay, it's working. There's our plate current, grid current, plate voltage on the 833. There's a resting plate current on these 3400Cs. This camera accentuates the IR. They're actually a pretty dull orange. They're very healthy looking orange. And this thing makes them look real bright and purple. They don't really look like that. If they did, I'd be very concerned. But the problem is this. Okay, let's lock it on. Now I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit, the input gain. And I get acoustic feedback from this crazy transformer. But you see, it's acoustic feedback. I gotta quit that. Hello, 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 hello. See, you can see the modulation, you can see the acoustic feedback. Oh my goodness. Isn't that awful? Oh my. What am I gonna do with that transformer? It's, it's that transformer. This is not totally uncommon. It's not, com it's not completely uncommon to be able to hear the modulation transformer talk. But that's talking a little too loud, isn't it? Unless I locate that darn thing in another room, which I'm not going to do. I'm thinking I can just tighten the heck out of those. Uh, it's got four bolts in it, two at the top and two at the bottom. I don't know if they just hold the end bells on or not. Let's turn this thing off. So this thing is death on contact. I'm talking here. You know, besides dressing it up and making it safe and pretty and touch up here and there and playing with it for the next month, just, you know, because of an insatiable, obsessive hobby. Um, I've got to solve that acoustic problem. So maybe tightening it up really tight. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had a problem like this. Maybe some of you AM, AMers out there have. Um, and what to do about it besides uh, tightening up the uh, lamination bolts and I guess if it was if it, if it was possible to soak it in lacquer or something like that something to calm it down but anyway I just thought it'd be really cool to uh, plate modulate this um, this 833 I've been running it for years in uh, grid driven Class B, two grid tune plate, they call it TGTP. I've uh, got a variac here on the, on the bias. And I set it for a resting uh, plate current of 50 milliamps at about 90 volts, 95 volts. See, it's up at 132. That's as high as it'll go. To run a Class C, you uh, 
put enough bias on it to cut the tube off or very close to cut it off. Reduce the plate current to, to a very low and safe level, just a few milliamps. And then you put a resistor in series with it so that when you drive it with RF, you generate the rest of the bias, which is like minus 300, which is about twice cutoff, which is the way you do Class C amplifiers. And then you can plate modulate it. So the way this thing works is uh, this is an audio amplifier right here, all to itself. Uh, it should do about, oh, I don't know, 600 watts or so. It's got its own power supply. Now, a lot of times you use a common power supply, but I wanted separate ones. I wanted the uh, modulator to have its power supply and then the RF amplifier to have its own. Okay. Um, and you run the, the high voltage out from the power supply here. You run it up, you run it through the secondary of the modulation transformer, then back to the amplifier. From the power supply through the, through the modulation transformer secondary, back to the plate supply of the amplifier. And uh, you impose, superimpose, you modulate that that steady DC high voltage by adding and subtracting the audio signal, the audio from it, that's, that's what modulates the carrier. Works real good. This one over here works exceptionally well. I've got plenty of audio. I get 300 watts out, just a little over 300 of RF, and uh, plenty of modulation. I limit the modulation negative peaks by what's called a keep alive voltage. I've made these comments before on AEM transmitters, but uh, if you're an AEM transmitter guy, you might like this. And maybe you've got some suggestions of how to calm that transformer down. I mean, that is that's the ultimate modulation transformer. That's that's the that's the that's the dream one to have, so to speak. And back in its day when it was new, I, I bet it didn't uh, do that. <laughs> So what do you think? Thanks for watching. Stay safe.